Okay, so here we have an Alcyon blue stained section of a kidney and we've got around the outside, we've got the cortex around here, we have the medulla in the middle, we have the blood vessels, the renal artery and its main branches coming into the kidney here. So let's take a look at higher magnification at the cortex of the kidney and we can see lots and lots of tubes cut in cross section and longitudinal section and oblique section around here and then we can see lots of these little round balls of cells and these are the glomeruli of the kidney. So let's zoom in on one here. So as we increase the magnification we can see um, the pole of the kidney here. Uh, this would be uh, a sort of squashed um, afferent or efferent arteriole here uh, and this here is a distal convoluted tubule. You can see the nuclei of the cells here and the cells are quite cuboidal here in these tubules um, and there are two distinct types of tubules that you can see around this glomerulus. There are ones that have a quite a, a fluffy centre where the lumen isn't very clear and there are ones where the centre is quite open. So the ones where the centre is quite open are the distal convoluted tubules, so that one, that one and this one over here. And then most of the rest of what we can see are proximal convoluted tubules. Well, how do I know that? Uh, well, that's because much of what goes on in the proximal convoluted tubule is resorption. So once the kidney has uh, filtered, it's filtrate and it goes into the proximal convoluted tubule, much of what is reabsorbed there um, happens in the proximal convoluted tubule. So the cells here are cuboidal in nature and have big long microvilli poking into the centre, into the lumen, and that's why the lumen doesn't look empty um, in the proximal convoluted tubules, because lots and lots of microvilli to provide that additional surface area for resorption. The distal convoluted tubules do do resorption as well, but they don't do anywhere near as much of it, so they don't need that additional cellular detail. So let's just look a bit more closely at the glomerulus. The glomerulus really is a ball of capillaries. Um, they come from the afferent arteriole, which you can never really see very clearly in these sections. The afferent arteriole comes in, it splits into a capillary network and then reforms to become an efferent arteriole at the other end. And that's the only part of the body where you get a, a capillary bed part way along an arteriole. This glomerulus is held together, this ball of um, capillaries is held together by a small amount of connective tissue called the mesangium and there are mesangial cells as part of that. Uh, and then the, the capillaries themselves, you can see some of them in cross section here. So here's one, here's another one. Um, so you can see the sort of detail of that held together by the mesangium. And then the kidney um, filter itself uh, is really across this line here. So the blood in the capillaries is filtered through the fenestrated endothelium of the capillary, through the basement membrane of the capillary, and then through the foot processes of the visceral epithelium, which are called the podocytes. So you can see a podocyte nucleus here, you can see a podocyte nucleus here, okay? And they have processes that join each other, that, that interdigitate with uh, adjacent ones. And so your kidney filter is from the interior of the capillary through the basement membrane and then between the podocyte foot processes. It goes into then this space which is the Bowman's space uh, and the Bowman's space is lined with flat nuclei, flat epithelial cells, uh, squamous epithelial cells uh, which are just called the uh, parietal um, epithelium of Bowman's capsule and then from there the filtrate goes into a proximal convoluted tubule, which as we've said has specializations as long, long microvilli to help it reabsorb. The kidney's main job is to filter the blood. It comes in uh, under pressure in the afferent arteriole um, and by varying the diameter of the afferent and efferent arteriole, it can control the flow rate and the pressure going through these capillaries. Anything smaller than albumin and anything that's positively charged uh, is easily filtered out. And then the, the really special part of the kidney uh, is the reabsorbing in the tubules of everything in the correct quantities for homeostasis. So just looking here at the um, cells that line the distal convoluted tubule, you can see that the nuclei are very close together at the bit where it butts up against 
um, the afferent arteriole. And this is the juxtaglomerular apparatus where these cells are called macula densa cells and they detect the levels of sodium in the filtrate and they work together with um, pressure sensing cells in the afferent arteriole. And those together uh, will be able to make the decision about whether or not to release renin. And that's how the renin angiotensin aldosterone system works. So just having a look, so that's where we looked at just now was the cortex and the cortex is mostly filled with glomeruli and proximal and distal convoluted tubules. The medulla on the other hand is mostly the loops of Henle and collecting ducts. So let's just have a closer look in there right now. So as soon as we go in there we can see lots and lots of tubes in cross section and you can see quite nicely that these cells are um, columnar epithelial cells, lots and lots of cross sections, um, and these are the collecting ducts. And then in between the collecting ducts, there are cells with uh, cuboidal epithelium, and these are the parts of the loop of Henle. Some are ascending, some are descending, uh, and then you get the thicker parts and the thinner parts. Okay, so if we want to see the thinner parts of the loop of Henle, we can sort of see them here. You can see they've got quite round nuclei, but very, very thin walls, so they're quite different to the ones we saw elsewhere. And then interspersed among those, we will see these orangey stained things here, our red blood cells. So you can see there are lots and lots of capillaries uh, interspersed within the thin parts of the loop of Henle. Again, quite nice visualisation here of the columnar cells lining the collecting ducts. And then finally, if we go zoom back out and have a look at this long, um, sort of quite flattened tube here, this is the ureter. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at this. And so I think it's quite nice, this sample, because we've looked at a number of different cell types or epithelial types. We've had columnar cells here. We've had squamous cells lining the um, glomerulus we've had cuboidal cells lining the proximal and distal convoluted tubule. And here we can see we've got a stratified epithelium, lots and lots of nuclei stacked up on top of each other. Um, so this is a stratified type of epithelium. And we always name our stratified epithelium by the shape of the cells on top. Um, these cells are not squamous, they're not flat like we have seen in the past. These cells are quite rounded almost, um, and sometimes they're a little bit flat, sometimes they're quite round. And this epithelium is a specialised type of epithelium that's only found in the ureters and bladder, and it's called transitional epithelium. And what happens as this epithelium, as the tube is stretched, they become quite squamous, and when the tube is relaxed, they're much more dome-like and rounded. The basement membrane is sitting along this sort of level here. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com and finally by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much and see you next time.